How many of you all know someone or knew someone that had cancer? Please, raise your hand. Look around. Look at the number of hands that's being raised, because that's a problem, a big problem. Have you ever experienced a moment in your life when enough was enough? Enough was enough for me during my freshman year of high school when I had a friend who family member passed away from cancer. Cancer took a big impact on my friend, and it started to take an impact on me because we were such great friends. As a result, I wanted to go out and learn as much as I could about cancer as possible. With that being said, I seeked out opportunities across the Chicagoland area in order to try to get an internship. And I was able to get an internship at Rush University Medical Center in Chicago, Illinois. But a good question I asked myself was, where exactly does a 17-year-old even start with something like this? I mean, most of my friends are either going to Florida or retaking the ACT. <laughs> And then there was me. I did something that most 17-year-olds was really wanting to do the summer before their senior year of high school, and that was, of course, to do cancer research in the lab. <laughs> but most of my friends looked at me insane, though. When I told them that I wasn't going to be able to go to Buckingham Fountain with them or go to Florida with them. But they didn't look at me insane, though, when I told them that I wasn't going to retake the ACT. But nothing can be compared to the first day of entering the lab. Honestly, when I first got into the lab, I was expecting myself to just know all the protocols, know all the information one needs to know to conduct cancer research. But sadly, that wasn't the case. Actually, on my first day entering the lab, I was handed tons of books to read about cancer. And from there, reality hit me. How exactly was I going to proceed with a project? What is the next step? I was informed that colon cancer was a project of the day. So knowing that, I went online and I found a variety of statistics on colon cancer. And what I found surprised me. 136,000 people are diagnosed with colon cancer each year. 50,000 die from colon cancer each year. Look at those numbers. Internalize it. Because there's more. Colon cancer is the third most commonly diagnosed cancer and the third leading cause of cancer death. On top of that, 95% of people that die from colon cancer are over the age of 50. So just like you all, I know those numbers didn't suit well with me either. So I went along and I came across another research article that investigated a variety of chemotherapeutic agents and the impact that these chemotherapeutic agents will have on cell death. But what I really got from that article was one unique fact about a chemotherapeutic agent called mitoxantron. Mitoxantron is a chemotherapeutic agent that induces cellular death and promotes a healthy immune response. So knowing that, I knew I wanted to go out and test a potential colon cancer vaccine. And the reason I knew I wanted to do this, because most times when we think about ways to approach cancer and ways to treat cancer, we think about chemotherapy, radiation, or surgery. Now, I'm not saying those are bad options. I'm not saying that at all. All I'm saying is there's another option. This other option would be cancer immunotherapy. Cancer immunotherapy is targeting your immune system to reject cancer. So in theory, the goal is you want to generate a substantial amount of activated tumor antisympathetic T cells with the potential to kill tumor cells. And under this concept of cancer immunotherapy, you have tumor vaccination. Tumor vaccinations treat existing tumors as well as prevent cancer-causing viruses. So what is the goal of tumor vaccination, you may ask? Well, the goal of tumor vaccination is to expose the body to proteins during the cancer cells. So knowing all of that, 
I knew I wanted to go out and investigate the impact that aging has on a whole tumor vaccine. So what is the experiment? What exactly is going on in my experiment that I conducted? Well, working with a mouse model and working with the cell line, CT26 mouse colon carcinoma cell, which are just colon cancer cell in mice, and working with the vaccine that consisted of treating these CT26 cells with mitoxantron, which is a chemotherapeutic agent that I mentioned earlier. On the first day of experimentation, I had a younger group of mice as well as an older group of mice. And using the vaccine, I injected the left flank of the mice on day one. And a week later, I challenged those same group of mice with a live CT26 mouse colon carcinoma cells. And from there, I started to track tumor growth as well as survival rates. The results, well, 100% of the mice in the younger group did, in fact, survive the tumor vaccine. They no longer show a sign of having the cancer. This is clinically important, since more than two-thirds of our patients that do have colon cancer come from the elderly population. But what about that one-third? I'll call it making a right step in the right direction. Now, one day, when I ask you all, how many of you all know someone I knew someone that had cancer. Hopefully, the number of hands that would be raised would be greatly reduced. That would mean one more family member being saved, one more friend being saved, one more loved one being saved, and overall, more humans being saved. And that would inspire me to do what I do. But it's not necessarily all about me, because it's going to be a team effort from all of us. Starting here today, we all can make a step to fighting cancer. It doesn't matter if you're a PhD researcher, an undergraduate biology major, or a curious fifth grader as I was, we all can take a step to defeat cancer. And let's all start here today. I know for a fact that we will win this fight because it's all about the mindset. It's all about the determination and the passion that you have to win. It's the drive. I know that we'll win this fight because if we don't plan to succeed, then we are planning to fail. Thank you.